Hello and welcome to another Shader of Sandwich tutorial. My name is Sean and I'm really sorry about the wait guys. I've had hard drive failure, I've had microphone failure. I mean, this microphone that I'm using currently is like on its last legs. Like if I move the wire even slightly, it just straight up doesn't work. All the audio cuts out. Uh, that's what happened last time. So hopefully it all goes well. But anyway, um, today we'll be creating this really cool looking hologram shader. I've had a lot of people ask how I made it actually, and I released it for free a while ago, so if you want to get a good explanation of it all, hopefully this is the right place. Alright, so I'm going to break down the shader into its key components, so that way we can work out what we need to do and how to make it. So this is what we'll be making. So if I go ahead and I turn everything off in the emission, you can see all the individual bits it's made out of. So at its base there is a rim light. We all know how to make one, it's pretty basic, but it just adds a nice effect, and it really enhances that flickering. Next we have some dust. This just sort of adds a little bit of visual detail, it's not the most prettiest part of it, hence why it's so subtle. Then we have some sparkles. So these sparkles just distribute across the surface, and just give it a nice amount of detail, and they look nice. Then we have some squares, which really help give it that technology look, and they just look pretty cool. It all looks pretty cool, I'm just repeating myself. And finally, we have these lines that scroll across the surface. The lines, once again, help add to that sort of broken technology look, which then gets enhanced by the flickering. So, all in all, it's kind of complex, but we should be able to break it down to these key components and make them separately, and then combine them together. So, let us get started. Just one last look at what we're making. And here it is. Alright, well, let's get started. So, open up Shader Sandwich and go File, New. And here we are. So, <laughs> first thing we're going to do is go into our passes and configure how the shader base is going to work. So, let's go ahead into passes. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the lighting type to custom and I'm going to disable specular. I'm setting the lighting to custom to actually disable the lighting. Problem is, if you disable the lighting currently, it also disables emission. So, I'm just going to set it to custom, and just not do any lighting calculations. Next, since pretty much the entire shader happens within the emission, I'm going to turn on emission. And I'm also going to turn on transparency, and set it to fade blend mode. So this will allow us to get that sort of nice semi-transparent center. Finally, I'll also go ahead and enable Z right full. I'll just show you what this does. If I turn lighting back on, you can see how in transparency mode, uh, it has this sort of weird clipping and intersection, because Z-Writing isn't working properly. So if we turn on Z-Write, it's slightly more expensive shader-wise, but it looks a lot better. So I'll go ahead and turn lighting back off now, and turn off specular. So down the bottom in the MISC, we can go ahead and turn off a bunch more lighting stuff. I'm going to disable uh, ambient, vertex lights, shadows, light maps, and forward add. Alright, well we're all set up, let's actually get into the shader. So, I'm going to go over into Layers. Okay, so since everything takes place in Emission, I'm just going to go ahead and set our albedo to black. So now everything we add into the Emission is pretty much the main color. There's a good reason for doing it in the Emission instead of the albedo, which I'll cover later when we start handling transparency. Alright, so the first thing we're going to add is our rim light, because it's, let's be honest, the simplest. So I'm going to add a new layer into the Emission, and I'm going to set it to use the default mask that exists. So this way, as we change our mask, we can see it update in real time. I'm going to call this mask Rim. So to create our rim light, we're going to go ahead and add a new layer, and set this to Basic Literal. So what this does is it takes the mapping value, and then shows it literally. So basically, for example, the UV map here, which goes from 0 to 1, the mask itself goes from 0 to 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to map this to the rim light, which once again goes from 1 to 0 to the outside. So, first thing we're going to do is invert this, so I'm going to add a mapping flip effect to flip it on the x-axis, like so. And then I'm going to add a maths power effect. This is the main reason I'm doing this in a mask instead of in the layer like in most other tutorials, because by adding the power effect here, it doesn't alter the color, so that way you can accurately set the color instead of just having to deal with it being kind of weird. So I'm going to set the power to, I don't know, something like... Uh, free, I think. Free is going to be good. Yeah, I'm going to go free. Alright, so that's our rim. So now let's actually get into adding some interesting stuff. So let's add the dust now. 
But dust is probably the simplest complex looking part, if that makes sense. So it's a good place to start. So let's go back into our pass one and I'll add a new layer. I'll also go ahead and make the uh, rim light just kind of a nice blue. Something like that, let's go with. So back in the emission, I'll go ahead and add a new layer and I'll add a new mask and set this layer to use that mask. So now if I go back into mask, I can see what I'm doing once again, quite visually. So the dust is pretty simple. We're just gonna use procedural noise and animate it across the surface, kind of like we did in the Lava Cracks tutorial. So I'm gonna add a new layer and set it to use procedural pearl and noise. And here we go. So now because I want it to move independent of the UV map, I'm gonna set it to use the position mapping type. Now, if we add a mapping scale effect, which I'll set up a little bit just for now, you'll see it has this kind of weird distortion around the edges. This is because by default the noise is two-dimensional, meaning it's simply being projected from this view angle. So for example, these pixels up here are actually being spread across that entire area from this direction, hence why there's this weird distortion. If we scroll up to the top, we can set this to use 3D mode instead of 2D, and now the problem is fixed. So down in the scale, I'm going to set it up to something like 30. Just so that way it's small enough, but isn't too small to be unnoticeable or visually distracting. So now it's animated. I'm going to add a mapping offset effect. And I'll add a new input in the Z offset. Now if we go into our inputs, we can turn off visible and set the replacement to something like time basic. I think very slow. Maybe slow. Time basic slow. There we go, that looks good. And I'll go ahead and name this time basic slow. So that way we can easily access it in other inputs. So, let's go back into our layers and make it look a bit better. And then we can add some more stuff. So I'm just going to set this to be a purple. And I'm also going to make it kind of dark. Because, let's be honest, it's definitely not the most interesting looking part. Alright, so now let's add the sparkles. So once again, add a new layer. Add a new mask. And set this new layer to use the new mask. In this case, I'm going to make the color, once again, kind of a nice blue. Uh, something like that, let's go with. Alright, so back in our mask, we can go ahead and add this. So the idea behind the sparkles is actually two pearl and noise layers. One which adds all the little speckles, and another one which then creates the splotchy patterns. So let's copy-paste this layer's mask into mask 2. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is first I'll increase the scale a bunch. By the way, if it ever gets kind of slow for you, feel free to disable previews, animate layer previews. This only affects the previews down the bottom here, which are generated on the CPU rather than the GPU, so it's a lot slower. Alright, so I'm going to set the scale of mask 2, which I should really name these. I'll set mask 1 to be dust, and I'll set mask 2 to be sparkles, if I could type. So I'm going to set the scale in the sparkles mask to 100. And there we go, so it's quite small, but it's not small enough to be horrifically distracting when you zoom out. Alright, so now if we copy-paste this, then we can go ahead and set the scale to something more like... I'm going to go 10, maybe? And I'll also set this to use multiply burn mode. Now, in my opinion, it's going a little fast, although you might not agree. I prefer to have this one be kind of slow. So what I'm going to do is I can actually slow this down. So I'll just add a new input in the offset. And I'll just set this to be time basic very slow. And then I'll turn off visible and set it to time basic very slow. Alright. So now it's not looking particularly sparkly, so let's actually enhance the contrast. I'm going to add another layer and set this to be the basic previous type. So now if I scroll down to the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and add the maths round effect. So as you can see, this makes it a lot sparklier. However, we probably want a bit more, and we want the patterns to be a bit larger. To do this, we can add a maths add effect, and add it before the round, so we can just move it up by clicking this arrow. So now if we increase the add, we can increase the amount of sparkles there are. So I'm going to use something like 0 0.15, I think? Maybe a bit less, 0 0.12. 0 0.1? 0 0.1 looks alright, maybe even less, 0 0.08. Once again, just do it to taste, but I think that looks alright. Now, the colors probably aren't looking that great, but don't worry, we'll play around with them after we've got the base elements done. Alright, so there's two last base elements now. There are the squares, and there's the lines. So let's go ahead and add the squares now. So once again, add another layer into the emission. 
I'm going to make this one a kind of orange, I think. And then add a new mask, call it squares, and then set this layer to use that mask. Another thing I forgot to do as well is to set these layers to use add blend mode. This is important in ensuring it all looks kind of transparent instead of just being placed on top. Alright, so back over here in our mask, we can go ahead and add some squares. So what I'm going to do is I'll duplicate the sparkles across. And I'm just going to set the scale down to something more like, uh, let's go with 0, 1.5, 1.5 maybe, something like that. You don't want them to be particularly big, but you don't want them to be too small either. So I'm going to go with that. So now to make them look like squares, all we need to do is apply a pixelate effect. So just add a blur pixelate effect. And I'm going to move it to the top of the pile. So now if we disable separate and then turn up the size, we can start to have that blocky effect. I'm going to go with something like 0 0.14, 0 0.13 maybe. Somewhere around there should look pretty good, I think. I might just go with 0 0.1 actually. It might be easier. Alright, and that looks pretty good. Sort of. <laughs> it's certainly not looking as good as before, but we'll get it there. Alright, so finally, all we have to add is the line. So, once again, I'll add a new layer. And I'll add a new mask. And I'll set this layer to use that mask with add blend mode. And for this, I'll also make this kind of an orange color. The way I'm doing this is trying to add a nice mix of blues, purples, and oranges. Because I think it creates a nice feel. But once again, feel free to change it up. So I'm going to call this lines. Alright, so for the lines, I really wanted them to be kind of randomized. However, I didn't want to use any more procedural noise, because the more you add, the slower the shader gets. So we're going to make this one by using a bunch of math layers instead. So add a new layer into lines, and we're going to set this to be a basic literal. And once again, set it to the position. So now we have something like this. So if we add a mapping scale effect, like so, and we bump it up to, I don't know, I'm just going to increase it a bit. You can see how it creates this very sharp line. Now what we want is to continue that line across, just have multiple of them. The easiest way to do this is to add the maths sine effect, which just applies a sine wave to it, like so. So obviously this isn't quite what we want, so I'm going to increase the scale first to something like 50, just to decrease the line width. But now we really want the lines to be less frequent. So the easiest way to do this is just like in the sparkles, we create another layer, which again gets multiplied on top, to sort of divvy out the lines a bit better. So let's copy and paste it. And then just go ahead and set the scale down to something a little smaller, like 20. I'm going to go up 20. And then set it to multiply on top. So now you can see we kind of have these line groups. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the rest of the layers because it is kind of distracting. And there we go, it's a bit better. Now we can play with this a little more. I'm going to turn off sine 0 to 1 first of all. So now it goes from 0 to negative 1, which increases the contrast a bit. However, we really want to try and get rid of these kind of weird lines and decrease the frequency somewhat. So I'll add another layer, and I'll set this to be the basic previous type. So now we can go ahead and change this around. I'm just going to add a maps power effect. So now if we increase the power, you can see how it kind of removes some of those lines. Like so. Finally, I'll add a maps clamp effect, just to ensure everything stays within 0 and 1. Because otherwise some parts can become darker than black, which then makes the, those parts look darker on the actual, when combined with all these other ones. So, I can go ahead and add everything back together now, and we can take a look at what we've done. Alright, so, that's not looking that good yet, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's a start, but it really needs to look better. So what's actually missing from the original hologram shader? It's that sense of contrast and that transparency. So let's work on that now. First thing we'll improve is the contrast and the color scheme. So within this blue, first of all, the rim light is really, really dim. So what I'm going to do is add a maths multiply effect to the rim light layer. I'm just going to multiply it up by two, so that way it's a little stronger. So the orange is obviously way too strong currently. And I honestly don't think orange is working that well with the color scheme. If anything, I'd go with something a little more pinky purple, maybe very hot pink. Something like this. And then just make it a lot darker. So as we make it darker, yeah, that purple starts to stand out more and it really doesn't look that good. So let's make that a bit darker as well, I feel. Something around there. 
Now the blue isn't looking too bad, neither is the orange, I think. But once again, they're not looking that visually striking. So the main thing we can do to improve it now is to add that transparency. Once we add the transparency, then we can go back and alter our colors a bit more. So the good thing about applying everything in the emission is that when we set the alpha to zero, the emission gets applied on top of it. So this way, the darker parts of the emission become transparent, while the brighter parts become opaque. So to show this off really easily, I'm gonna add a layer in the alpha, and I'll just set the alpha value to black. So now if I use something other than a black cube, you can see how the middle part is semi-transparent now. However, it really isn't particularly strong. So let's make the alpha a bit more interesting. What I can do is I can add the maths subtract effect to actually go into negative alpha values, which then start to affect the emission. So if I increase the subtract amount, you'll see nothing happens. This is because by default effects don't affect the alpha channel. So if we just simply set the channel that the alpha layer channel is using to red, then we'll actually see our effect. Sorry about that. So now if we increase this, you can see how it starts to make the center a little more hollowed out, which looks a lot more interesting. I'm going to go back to the black background now. Finally, instead of just hollowing out everything, what we can do is make this a rim light. Right, so we can go ahead and set this to basic literal. And if we then map it to the rim light, which by default maps with the opaque part in the center and the transparent part around the outside, we can then go ahead and flip that around with a mapping flip effect. And there we go. So now if we increase this subtract, you can see how the center becomes transparent faster than the outside. And we can enhance this effect by adding a maps power effect before the subtract. So now, as you enhance the power, you can see how the inside can become more or less opaque to create a much more interesting effect. So another thing we can do to make it look better, uh, which I was actually planning on doing, I just forgot, is to make these lines move across the monkey. So to do this, go back into the mask, into lines. Uh, what we can do is add a mapping offset effect, and we'll want to bump it up to the top of the effects pile. And then just add a new input for VX offset, because I find sometimes you want to set the timing a bit differently than the others. So I'll just do that. And then down the bottom, just add a mapping offset effect as well. And set it to use the same input. Lines, X offset. Now I'll go into inputs, and I'll just find whatever time one works best. I'll try out slow. Looks alright. Uh, custom was not what I meant to do. Very slow maybe. I'm not sure. Once again, just do it to taste. I think I'll go very slow for now, but I might want to change it later. So I'll go with that, and I'll just set this to line speed. All right, so now we've got our lines moving across. For those wondering how I got the lines in the original hologram shader to rotate around, what I did was instead of mapping it to the position, I mapped it to the UV map. So you can go ahead and do that, make sure to do both, to get a more circular motion. But it really depends on how the UV map is laid out. For example, in a character model, this may or may not work, so feel free to use position if you want to make sure it looks decent every time. I am going to do that. Alright, so we're getting there. Now it's time to go ahead and add the flickering and the pull effect. So I'm going to go back into passes, and what I'm going to do is I will add a new layer in the vertex channel. So we're going to work on the pull effect first because it's the simplest. So what I'll do is I'll set the vertex displacement type to position. And the idea is that we're going to use a mask to affect this part to actually move towards the center, to pull it inwards. For example, you might want to just pull it in on some axes, though. So I find a good mix is like that. So now you can see how, as we move it towards white, it gets pulled towards the center. So that's what we're going to do, but we're only going to have the bottom part get pulled in while the rest stays unaffected. So let's do that. What I'll do is I'll add a new mask, once again, and I'll call this Pull. And then I'll set the vertex layer to use that mask. Alright, so within Pull, we're going to add a new layer, and we're going to set it to use the basic literal type again. So the idea is we'll use the position, which starts off with 0 in the middle. It becomes negative as it goes down, and positive as it goes up. So the idea is then we can go ahead, if it's 0 down there and 1-ish up there, we can invert that and then apply a power effect to sort of isolate the area. If that doesn't make sense, you'll see it pretty visually in a sec, so let's just do it. So what I'll do first is I'll set this to use a channel other than red. The red channel is simply the X channel, so what we really want is the Y axis, so I'll set it to green. 
Now, I notice nothing is happening, and this is because I set the vertex to be white, whereas I really want that to be black currently, so that way I can see the effect. In fact, what I'll do is I don't want it to stretch it on the y-axis, so I'll set green back to white. Alright, so now I can continue working. Sorry about that. So back in pull, you can see how it's currently pulling it towards the top, and it just looks kind of weird. So first thing I'll do is I'll invert it by adding the color invert effect. So now we've got it pulling towards a point down there, which is good. However, you can see the part underneath it becomes really bugged out. So what we can do is add a mass clamp effect. This is because those parts are going into negatives, and so it's literally flipping the object. If we clamp it to zero, then they'll just stay there. Alright, so now we can go ahead and add a power effect to isolate the area, and then add another effect to let us move where it pulls. So let's add a mapping power effect. So if I increase the power, you can see how it isolates the area quite nicely. And you can see down here what it's doing quite easily. So finally, let's make it able to be moved around. So I'll add the maths subtract effect now, and I'll move it above the clamp. So that way, as we move it around, it doesn't once again go into negatives. So now as you decrease or increase the subtract effect, you can change where it occurs, like so. All right, well, that's looking pretty good. So now it's time to go ahead and create the flicker effect. It's gonna go ahead and mess with the pull slightly. There we go, I think that looks good. All right, so now for the flicker. The flicker actually uses similar principles to the lines area, with sort of this very large line moving across at a fast speed, and then activating a map which just contains random noise in it, basically. Once again, if it doesn't make sense, just follow along and you'll understand what it's doing pretty quickly, hopefully at least. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So first layer I'll add is called flicker, which I'll add, and I'll call it flicker. So what this one does is it determines whether or not it's flickering. Then I'll go ahead and add another mask, which will be called flicker noise. And the flicker noise is what the vertex layer will actually use as its mask. The flicker noise will use the flicker as its mask, and that way it applies whether or not the flicker is on or off to a noise uh, procedural type. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll get started on our flicker. So I'll copy paste lines over the flicker. And just so we can visualize it, I'll add a new layer in the vertex, just so we can take a look at what it's doing. And I'll set it to use the normal displacement type set to add mode, so that way it kind of inflates. Then I'll set it just temporarily to use the flicker mask, although eventually it will use the flicker noise. So you can see what it's doing pretty easily here. It's basically applying that line, but it's vertex displacing it. So what we instead want is this line to be a lot larger and a lot less frequent. So first I'm going to add a maths round effect down the bottom here. So you can see now that this sets it to be either on or off, which is pretty good. So then what we can do is we really want to stretch it out and we want to make it low frequency and very short bursts. So let's see if we can do that. First thing I'll do is I'll move the scale up above the offset, which will change the speed at which they move differently. So now if I decrease the scale, I'm going to set something like 0.5, you can see how decreasing the scale actually makes it move quicker. This is due to how mapping effects mix uh, in the layer order. I've really got to write that down in the documentation. Uh, I will get to that, I promise. So now we really want to change how long they last. We can alter the frequency of them by changing the scale, but currently they last way too long. So what we can do is add a maths power effect, which will just simply make them thinner. So I'm just going to set this power effect to something up like 100. <laughs> And I might even lower the scale a little bit. Just gotta wait a tiny bit, see if one comes through. Sorry, I fiddled around with this like a dumbass for like five minutes now. <laughs> um, I realized all I need to do is uh, change the offset speed. So what I've done is I've set the scale to 0 0.5 and I've set the power to 100. I might want to change those later. But what I'm going to do is in the offset, I'm going to add a new input, and I'll set it to time basic fast. And I'll go ahead and call this glitch speed. So as you can see now, it races through. It's still not quite right, so what we can do is affect the scale a bit. If we lower that, you can change the frequency of it. And then we can alter the power to change the width of it. 
Something like that, maybe? Depending on how quick you want it to go through, I guess. I think I might set mine to 180. That should be alright. Uh, 240. Doesn't matter. I can play with it after. Alright, so now to actually make it look noisy, because currently it just looks like an abomination. So, what we can do is go into our flicker noise. First, I'll go back into our vertex, and I'll set this layer to use... Sorry, that's the pull one. And I'll set it to use flicker noise instead of flicker. Alright, so the idea behind flicker noise is this is where we'll apply some Perl and noise, which will then use this flicker mask to be either on or off. So let's do that. First I'll add a layer and I'll set it to be black. So this way when this is off, it isn't actually affecting the vertex at all. So now I'll add another layer. Now for those of you who have a, probably the current version actually, um, you won't have this thing called random noise. So what you can do instead is use Perl and noise and set this to use mapping, scale, and just bump it up to something crazy like 100, 400, just something like this so it looks all spiky. However, for those of you with a newer version, or the one that isn't out yet, just set it to random noise. And then you can remove the scale. It's just a little faster, adding more Perl and noises just slows things down, but in practice it really doesn't matter that much. Alright, so now let's animate it. So I'm just going to add a mapping offset effect, and I can really just set it to any of these. I'm just going to set it to time basic slow, but it really doesn't matter, as long as it looks crazy. Alright, so now that we have our flickering, we can go ahead and set the mask of the flicker layer to our flicker mask. So now when it's off, it won't flicker, and then it flickers, like so. Now, I might want to change how it moves across a little bit still. Might set that down to 0 0.1 maybe to increase it slightly. Something more like that. So then finally, in the vertex, we can just play around with how it actually gets mixed in. So, for example, I might want it to only affect on these two um, layers, and then I might just move it down a little bit. So it flickers like that. There we go. Now, one thing you might want to add that I added in my original shader. In the flicker, I added a new layer, and I set this to white. So that way, I could control whether or not the flicker was forced or not. So I'll add an input for this as well, and I'll call it forced flicker in a bit when we actually make it look nice. So, this is basically the shader. It's done, I think. One thing you might want to look into is you might want to move the layer above the pull layer, so that way it doesn't flicker down there, but it really depends on the effect you're looking for. In this case, I might just leave it as it was. But anyway, that's the general gist of the hologram shader. Hopefully it made sense. Um, but yeah. Alright, so now let's actually make this a nice looking shader in the material panel, just like we did with the water shader. So I'll go ahead and save this shader. I'll just call it Hologram uh, tutorial. There we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make it look pretty in the material panel. But I'm also going to show you an interesting bug that only occurs in the material panel that we can fix up in a jiffy. So what I'll do is I'll create a material and I'll call it hologram tutorial. Pretty inventive, I know. And I'll drag in the hologram shader. And you'll notice it has this kind of weird uh, striped look. It doesn't look continuous. Now this is an interesting uh, problem actually, because for some reason it doesn't happen within the Shader Standard Preview, and this is why it's a really good idea to test your shaders both on computers and on whatever platform you're distributing to, such as mobile. So the way we can fix this is in the lines, if we go to the bottom here you'll see we've added this clamp effect. If we turn it off we get the same effect here. Now due to the way Unity works, for some reason it's optimizing this clamp effect out of the shader, when it's actually important. The only way to fix this is to move it above the power. And then, yeah. So just hit File, Save, and it's fixed. Welcome to the world of shaders. Not everything always makes sense, and sometimes you've got to experiment a bit, because GPUs are insane. Um, so yeah, I honestly, I can't give a better explanation than that, to be honest. It's just, it's a really weird problem. But anyway, now let's actually make it look nice in the material panel. So. What we can do is, first we'll probably want some color controls possibly. So I'll go ahead into the emission, and I'll add some of these as colors. I'll add that one, I'll add this one, add the sparkles, and I'll add the lines and the squares. And I'll go ahead and call them something a little better than emission to color. So this will be our rim color. This will be the uh, dust color. 
This will be the sparkles color. Squares color. And the lines color. Alright, so that's a little better. Now up here we have our flicker mix amount. So what we can do is we can move that down to the bottom. And we'll call this force flicker. So I'll go ahead and save and we can take a look. It's definitely looking a bit better. So now another thing we'll want to add as an option in here is the ability to change where the pull amount happens. So if we go into our mask and into our pull, we can just add a input for the subtract. And then just go back into inputs and call this pull height. Another thing we might want to do is the ability to alter the flicker strength and the flicker direction. So once again in our flicker vertex mask, we can go ahead, I think this is the flicker one, nope, that is the pull. In the flicker one, we can add an input for the color, and we should probably add one for the pull as well. Finally, just go in here, call them the correct thing, flicker, flicker vector, or flicker direction maybe, and then we have pull direction, and then we can just move them into their correct area, like so. Alright, and there we go. Now it's a little more artist friendly. They can play around with how it looks. They can change some of the colors. And yeah. Alright, well, we're done. I'm gonna end the tutorial here. Hopefully that all made sense. As usual, if it didn't, please leave a comment. I try to reply. I'm just... I wouldn't even say I'm busy. I'm just... Half, like, half the time I look at the comment, and then I just don't reply, even though I know the answer. I don't know why. Um... I'm gonna try and be a little better, but yeah, so feel free to leave a comment down below, or email me. Um, I tend to reply to emails a little better, actually, I think because they're not public. So, yeah, so feel free to email me, I'll leave a link in the description. Alright, but yeah, that's the hologram tutorial, hopefully it was worth the wait. But yeah, thanks for watching, see you guys later.